<clears throat> All right, so this is just going to be a simple, uh, quick overview of a few things that I think are interesting or important. Um, so the first one is preferences. So if you go up here to the edit, you can click on preferences here or press Alt P to uh, open the preferences. And I'm, I'm not going to go into depth. Uh, I just, I just uh, encourage to have a look through these. And I'm gonna show you a few things that I think uh, might be interesting. So the first one is the startup file mode. So it's usually set to default example file and it's the jelly bean kind of displays thing you see in the beginning. And I usually just start it with a blank file now because uh, you know you don't have to delete stuff. And you can also start it with a custom file that you can select here if you, if you like it. Um, and also one thing is like, just have a look for these. Um, one thing is the checkerboard. So um, there's some people who, who told me, you know, if you have like a, let's just say, say you have a circle that um, you can get rid of this checkerboard background um, by just changing this. And I've actually done that for some time, um, but it's not, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So you can change this to black, they save this. You can now see the background is black. The thing is, the checkerboard is super useful because it's always telling you where there's alpha or transparency. And that's very good to know if you want to actually export something with alpha. Um, so to get rid of uh, the alpha background, I usually just use the transform as you have probably seen me do uh, quite a few times now. So um, this way, there's actually a black background. And if you change this to a black background, if you export it as a PNG, for example, then there's still going to be alpha, I think. So, um, or if you if you do want to work with alpha, then you know you, you don't see where there's alpha anymore. So, um, it, it makes sense to to leave this on, just so you know. Um, another thing that I was asked about, uh, and this is probably the most important thing you, in this program, is that you can change the graph color. <laughs> so, um, yeah you can change the, the, the color of the graphs of the chops uh, in here. And there's some other options you have. So this is like the, the top secret information I'm giving to you. And one last thing that I already talked about in the dats is that you can specify a text and a table editor, which can be very useful if you're actually writing code. All right, so, uh, so much for the preferences. You can, um, I'm going to just talk about debugging very briefly, uh, and I've already talked about it a bit. So let's say I have a render here, or I have a um, threshold or something. Then we get two different uh, arrow, or like, yeah, one is an error, the other is a warning. I don't really know what the difference is, um, to be honest. I, I think they're both just errors. So one of like on both of these, you can or any error like this, um, you can always just click like middle mouse click on the operator and you're going to see the warning. So on here it says no camera com found rendering results may be undefined. So what you need here is a um, is a camera and uh, also a geo first. I, I'm not sure why, but for the geo, it doesn't show a warning, but you still need a geometry to show something there. So yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, the other thing is for the threshold, if you middle mouse click, it says not, not enough sources specified. So in this case, you would need a, a, a noise, for example, that you put in there. Um, and then you can see, <coughs> okay, now, now, now the warning is gone because it just needs an input. Uh, another example, if I just leave the noise here, it could be if you're working with a lookup and put the lookup there, it's gonna show you a warning because uh, the second input is missing. It's just second input required when using this method. So then you could just add a ramp, you usually would. Uh, and then you can change stuff here. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, debugging for the normal operators. One last thing about this actually, um, put the threshold back. If we zoom out now, you can see now uh, on the parent container also shows the error. So the error isn't actually this operator itself, but it just kind of shows you, oh, okay, in this container or base, there is uh, errors and there at least one. So um, 
And if you had another container base, it would show that again until you get to the actual operator and then you can fix the problem there. So that's super useful if you're working on bigger projects with lots of containers uh, or components. Okay, so, so much to this. Um, if you're working with Python, you um, you have a couple of options to uh, show errors there. So so let's say you have a text and I'm just writing some, some nonsense in there. Um, we can run the script, but you don't really, like you, you now see the error here. So you can um, middle mouse click and see the error here. You also, um, you can also split your pane here and turn this on. So we have like a, a bit more, like a bit cleaner or more information here. Um, the other thing is that you can actually create an error that, uh, and then you can, uh, if I just run this again with control R, um, you can now see, okay, we have like a table with like errors here, which you could technically also output somewhere. Okay, so this is, that is that. <laughs> um, and the last thing I want to talk about is uh, shortcuts. Uh, so I, so uh, here we have like a list of um, very useful shortcuts, at least a few of them. There's a lot of uh, shortcuts and I guess you can't really uh, remem remember all, at least I can't. So I'm just going to show you a few ones that I think are important. So um, we just have like a, our network here and we zoom out a bit. And let's say we have a huge network Then we can just, uh, we're like strolling off, we can just press H. And I've talked about this before, but um, it just kind of uh, centers uh, your network in a very convenient way. You can also use H uh, in a different way. So you can also uh, have like a, a sphere and have this viewer active. And maybe you strolled away and kind of looking at this from a stupid angle, you can just press H and then uh, you have it perfectly centered again, uh, kind of reset to its uh, original values. And the same works with the camera. Um, the other thing is uh, P. So P uh, with P, you can turn on the parameters and turn them off. So if you don't see them, press P. If you're like confused, <laughs> you can also right click and turn, turn them on. Um, there's also space so with space you can pause and play so if something isn't working right you might have just pressed pause mm. obviously you can just copy and paste with like uh, control c and v and also cut with control x so it's just a normal kind of yeah uh, shortcuts you can you can also press uh, uh, tab to open the op create dialog you have U and I, so with <laughs> U and I, <laughs> with U you can uh, go out of like so to your parent container, and with I you go in. So um, this is also pretty useful if you have if you like working with a lot of like components, you can just kind of uh, like it always goes into the one you have selected if you press I. And yeah, as you can see, if I press O, um, it shows this little map down there. So if you have a lot of operators, that could also be useful. Can't interact with it though. And the other thing is C. So let's say if you have a base, or like two bases, and in one you're doing some kind of chop operations, and the other you're doing top operations, you can press C. And the one you have selected, you can now color. So you can make this one like, a, if this is the top one, I can like color it that way. So I can like easily see, okay, and this one is, there's, top operations when there's chop operations or you know you can color it as anything you want also the, um, other operators but I've uh, only used it on components so far all right so obviously there's uh, control s for saving and control shift f shift s for uh, save s and also there's control f if you like searching for something so I can type in noise and then it actually shows that on the map here. So it also, yeah, there we go. Just kind of jumps to that. 
All right. Um, what else is there? I think that is it. Right, F1. So if you press F1, you're gonna start the perform mode, which can also be started just by clicking on this or by going to your window and clicking on perform. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, right, well, well <laughs> while we're talking about this, if you're in the perform mode, you can press escape instead of closing this because this actually closes touch designer. So if you press escape here, you're going back and you can delete operators by pressing delete or backspace both works well and um, I think you can also yeah you can also enter components by pressing enter so you can zoom in there I hope that's uh, the most important ones here no actually it's not <laughs> there's uh, one there's two other ones <laughs> one is the display one so pressing D uh, just shows your display mode um, and pressing A makes something active. So, yeah, whatever you have selected is gonna be active. Most important for dots and sobs. All right, now, now I've got it. So this is kind of a, just a messy video with, with some bits of information, but I think they're pretty useful. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next and I think the last video for now.